Hey folks, nice to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. The last couple of videos I've been doing updates on some of my tanks and every time I do that type of video everyone always asks well what about the X-Fish? You've killed it haven't you? Is it dead? So I thought I'll run through all the other tanks that I didn't mention in the last ones and then if you follow me on YouTube you'll have seen I posted a poll the other day about what to do with my epistogrammas so I'm going to look and see what the results are on that and do whatever it told me. But let's start off with this tank. We haven't mentioned this tank in a while. This is my killifish tank. So there's a pair in here. They've already had babies in their quarantine tank downstairs. I think I've seen some in here as well. So we should be doing good here. So there's killifish, cherry shrimp, and a whole load of plants. Um, so let's go and take a closer look. I can see one of them peeking out just down here. Hello. So it's basically just completely overgrown this tank, but down here you'll see there's the male and he's happy enough and um, the female, I just saw her a second ago, she's in there somewhere, but yeah it's a bit overgrown this tank, um, got cherry shrimp, but everything's kind of taken over by these floating plants which are doing really well actually. I'm not actually running a filter on this tank at the moment. It's so heavily planted, don't need to. Um, but the plants actually look really good for this amount of shade that we've got. Um, but much like the, the pea puffer tank, I've got cherry shrimp in here and the killifish are essentially just living off the cherry shrimp fry or the, the baby shrimplets. So I do feed them as well, but they're looking really good and they're well, really well conditioned. And I believe it's because they're eating the fry. So there's the female. So let's give them a little bit of food and see if we can tempt them out. I give these guys um, the Hikari Vibra Bites. They seem to really like that. Now they're going to prove me a liar by ignoring it. There you go, she's had one. But these are really beautiful fish. Uh, and I think they look really good in a nice dark tank as well. So that's why I quite like all this overgrown stuff because it does keep the tarp the tank quite dark but super little fish there's the male just down here not only super little fish gorgeous little fish so hopefully I'll get some more fry out of these guys as they chase each other around. So that's one tank. And then we'll talk about this one next. So this is the puffer tank. You can see him down there in the back corner. He's having a little snooze. I've just chucked in a prawn, so hopefully the smell will wake him up. Um, but if I pull back a bit. This is this tank's doing really well. Um, I was struggling with algae in this tank, but we seem to have got it under control. I think I've got the lights settings just about right um, I think they're on for five hours a day um, lots of new growth for the vowels um, these plants the see amensis they're doing brilliantly in here in terms of livestock we've got the puffer fish the fahaka which is down there but it's half asleep and then we have a black ghost knife fish. A, there's the black ghost knife fish as we talk about it. He's just gone and woken up the puffer fish. Black ghost knife fish. We have a, a biter, a Senegalese biter, and a couple of common bristle nose plecos. No aggression from the, the puffer fish really. I'm sure if I put in some small fish, he would quite happily have them for breakfast, but he leaves all these fish alone and they all kind of got on together. The good thing about it is the, the puffer fish is it's fairly docile for a puffer, from us, what I can understand. The black ghost knife fish is just a blind idiot, just crashes about the place, so he's often bumping into him, but nothing ever happens. And then we've got the Senegalese Bisher down here who's a bit of a sneaky bugger. 
So he just kind of hides out and goes, oh, what's going on, guys? We've got some food coming down. Can't really see him in amongst all that foliage. Yeah, but that's his plan. He just hides to wait for everyone else to get out of the way and then comes out and... has his lunch. So there's a black ghost munching away. He's a good foot long, that fish. It's brilliant. And then we've got the puffer at the back there. Let's see if we can get him to come out for some lunch. Last but not least, we've got the discus tank. So this is my main display tank. Um, I've just put in some food and finished doing a water change on this tank, so everyone's hiding in various places. Um, but yeah, been a bit neglected, I must admit, this tank. Um, you saw me replace the sump pump a few weeks ago, which is absolutely awesome. can definitely recommend that. I'll put another link in the description if you want to check that out. Completely silent, um, uses a lot less power, so I couldn't be happier. Totally variable, and um, comes with a, a little controller box here where I can set the power and I can turn it off for feedings and things like that. So really good, so really happy with that. The discus themselves, doing fine. Got a little bit of algae issue still going on here. If you look, so if you look on this piece of wood, for instance, that's the kind of thing I've been calling green beard algae. It's kind of sort of a hair algae, but it's not black beard, it's green. Um, I just have to pull it off basically to get rid of that stuff and then down here if we look here on the rocks for instance that's your blackbeard algae so i talked about um combating algae in one of the other earlier videos i'm probably going to do another video soon i noticed one of my subscribers anna smith check her channel out if you like spiders and stuff like that she does do aquatic stuff as well the creepy spiders as well and she said can you do a video on that if you're going to do it because she has she thinks she has to do it and isn't very confident in doing it i've only ever done it once before myself but yeah i shall do a video on that in the next couple of days hopefully but yeah everyone's doing all right there's a couple of discus in here for instance this one here you can see it is eating but it's quite thin um, and i've been looking at this for a number of weeks if not months so you can see that his tail's a little bit ragged and he's a bit thin so compared to this guy for instance who's nice and plump and good fins good everywhere he's just not looking great so i don't know if he needs to be warmed possibly or he's just sometimes that just happens so he's not the happiest in the world but he is still eating so as long as he's eating we've got a chance um so hopefully that will be okay. In this tank we've got all the discus, we've got the cardinals that are down in the fish room doing their quarantine that I can add to these. Uh, we've got some bristlenose plecos, some autos, some stairby corridoras. These wee guys are great, they're always dead busy. But yeah, just a bit overgrown with algae and not looking its greatest. Um, so just needs a little bit more effort put in there. But we'll get there, we'll get there. 
So let's move downstairs. So we have the pistols in here, you can see them both there. Um, I asked it a poll, should I put them in with the bristlenose clickos or not? Um, I think only one person said that it wasn't a good idea. And I kind of wanted to try it anyway, so in they shall go. So I'm going to take this little pot here um, and move that across as well into this tank. So I'll probably put the pot over here next to this one. I'm hoping that these holes in these pots are too small for the smallest of the clickles. Possibly the br super red bristle noses could get in there. But I hope not, and then we can get a little environment. I have got some more bits of wood. I'll probably add them as well. Give a little bit more hiding space and break things up a bit. But yeah, let's do that. Let's see how we get on. So first things first, just empty this tank of all obstacles so as I can catch the fish, basically. I've never done an easier catch than that in my life. Both went in straight away. And then we'll move them straight over. I know the water temperature's already matched, the parameters matched because it's the same water source. And then we can just let them out of the net. No rush, let them take their time. Go explore. The mushroom is just an experiment. I've never actually tried the plecos with mushroom before. The shrimp love it. Let's see how the plecos do. I've just put it in five minutes ago, maybe. You can see the plecos there. They've cleared out this little space for themselves. So that's them either trying to trap males or females or babies into the various caves and hides. And they've just cleared the space out behind the hides. The hides. So the pistols have just gone straight back in there. But your house is over here, guys. So they seem happy enough. Um, hopefully they'll find their homes and make their little dens themselves and make it their own. And hopefully everything will work out alright. This tank itself, it's never going to be a display tank. It's kind of cobbled together and it's got patched walls and things like that. But it, it runs fine. And it's running off an FX5 filter full of bio home. Um, check out the website if you want to buy some. Um, it it kind of looks after itself. It always has done. Having so many plecos in, you never really get algae in there. Um, but they are voracious eaters and voracious poopers. So you need to keep on top of that. But otherwise, I think they're great little fish. So we'll finish off that video shortly. I just want to do a bit of a time lapse on this mushroom versus courgette and see which one works out best. Because um, they tend to not eat things when I'm standing here watching them, unless the lights are out. But I'll put the camera on a bit of a time lapse, stick it on there, and if anything interesting happens, it will pop along shortly. If not, I'll say goodbye and I'll catch you in the next one.